Hello, and welcome to Better Business Bureau's Smart Consumer Program. Our goal is to tell you something you may not have heard about, how it might affect you, your friends, your family, the marketplace, and what may happen next. Well, this episode is going to be a little different because our guests will be telling us about some wonderful free resources for military communities. I know all of this because she's one of my colleagues, Nicole Fleury, Connecticut Better Business Bureau's Manager of Military Line. Welcome. Thank you. It's so weird to be speaking with a colleague like this in a, in a formal, <laughs> formal scenario. Um, a Better Business Bureau is largely regarded as an institution that helps the marketplace with businesses and consumers. How did it get involved with something like Military Line? Right. Great question. You know, BBB mission is to be the leader in advancing marketplace trust. And so one of the ways we do that is through educating our consumers. You know, whether it's helping them file a complaint or getting dispute resolution, we help them that way. But how we help military personnel is completely different. The DOD in 2003 um, started a DOD financial readiness campaign. And they asked BBB to partner with them and to start this program. So that's kind of how it came along as this educational foundation for financial readiness. And it's uh, like everyone else, people in the military are consumers, but they have special needs. And before we really get to that, what constitutes a military family for Military Line? So military families are anybody that are active duty, to um, veterans, to retirees, to National Guard, anybody that's serving our military constitute military personnel for us. But that also includes their spouses and their children, because all of, as a family, if they fall prey to a scam or identity theft, it's affecting everybody. So that's what we do to really see who the military families are. Transitioning from deployment back home has got to be uh, a culture shock in so many different ways. But it also means transitioning back into handling money, for example. And that's one of the things that Military Line helps them with as well? Yes, so as part of the Educational Foundation, when we go out there and we teach workshops, we're teaching them how to have financial literacy right in their hands, where they can get these resources. So when they're transitioning back home, a lot of the times on deployment, they have a big paycheck or they're coming back from boot camp and they have a big chunk of money and they're not really sure what they want to do with it or what's the best um, way to use it. And so how they do that, um, we just tell them, Here's certain programs we have. Here's certain things that you can do um, to get your family in a better financial situation. Now, uh, to some degree, it also means, because sometimes we have some very young folks who are out on deployment, it's not just a question of coming back and uh, catching up. It's a question of coming back and learning finances, how to handle credit, for example. Right. Great example. Um, you know, these younger guys, they don't go to college. They're usually 17 years old, 18 years old, going right into deployment. Um, they're going to boot camp, and they don't have the age experience that we do um, later in life, and they don't know what credit means or how to even pull your credit report or why it's even important to have a good credit score and not to sign up for another credit card or getting this terrible loan with terrible interest rates. So just giving those resources to these younger military personnel is really an exciting part of the program. Well, it's not that they're naive. It's, it's a skill that we've all got to learn. Right, correct. And, you know, usually when we're younger and right out of high school, we don't have money, right? So we're all right. broke. We don't know what to do with it. These guys are going out there and they have all this money and all, you know, they're coming back. They're earning a great living. They're serving our country. Um, and, you know, it's just something to say, here's some information on how to better manage it and why it's important. Now, outreach, public outreach is a, is a big component, a military line. And you've gone to a couple of bases. Mm -hmm. um, which ones, for example? So I went down to the sub base in um, Groton. So we've been down there. We worked actually in the library there. Um, I've also been to Camp Niantic. And um, we're looking forward to starting a better relationship with our National Guard and the drills and really getting involved there. How do they show their enthusiasm for this? Every, they're all excited. All the officers and um, sergeants know that this is important. They say, I wish I knew then what I, you know, what I, knew, what I know now. So I think everybody is excited and they know it's important to have this kind of information. And it's all free. It's, you know... It's just, here's a, here's a list of resources for you, and we better, you know, we teach them what they 
might not know. Now, this would be when they come back from deployment. Are there uh, any uh, resources we have before they're shipped out? Absolutely. So this, we give information from pre-deployment, pre-boot camp, um, to post-deployment, post-boot camp. Uh, so every range, active duty or veterans, we give this information. Um, but for pre-deployment, we say, here, you know, here's some savings plans for you while you're shipped overseas that you can earn a higher interest rate that the government is offering you. Um, you know, we do how to buy a house. A lot of these time, a lot of the time they get um, stuck with a house they purchased before they got deployed because they didn't know they were getting deployed and just kind of the, um, the resources to find what to do with it. Now the families, it's not just for the folks who are being deployed, but again, the, the spouse who's left at home to handle things uh, on her own or his own. There's some intervention or is it uh, the resources that we have that they can get to? Yeah, so we have resources for both active duty and their spouses. So, you know, we have, you know, obviously both information is good for both, but we do have specific here, spouse of a military family, this information is specifically for you. We hear sometimes, unfortunately, some very sad stories about uh, people coming back and, uh, for example, they'll be told if they sell their pension, they can get a great deal and they get cash out of it. These are the t and they end up getting a, a fraction of what they normally get. These are the kinds of things that, that Military Line warns them about? Absolutely. So we have seminars on avoiding identity theft and avoiding scams such as that, um, even just how to be a smarter consumer. But that is a big thing because a lot of the time they're, um, they get stuck in sticky situations, they, their identity gets stolen, their scams are prey, and we like to tell them, hey, watch out for this because this isn't going to be a good deal for you in the end. Right. Now, uh, we start, it's, it's a nas uh, national program, Military Line, but here in Connecticut, we put tremendous uh, attention on this, and that started two, three years ago, was it? Yep, I, we brought this program on four years ago. And in the past few years, we really expanded it, um, you know, reaching out to even doing military appreciation night sponsorships to really being out there in the community, doing veterans resources fairs, anything that we can do to get out there in front of our military personnel, in front of our veterans is a win for us um, and a win for me. So that's what we're doing in Connecticut. And they're an attentive audience too. They are. They all, every, every veteran or active duty I've talked to, um, even just an overview of the program, tell me that this is so necessary, that this is great information, you know, thank you for the reminder. Um, so it's a, they're very attentive. When you've got a couple dozen, a hundred people in front of you, um, it must be a bit intimidating. How do you break the ice? Oh, that's a great question because when you get out there and the, they're all military soldiers. It's definitely a time for an icebreaker. So what, what's great about these workshops and the way that I run them is I make it very interpersonal. Um, even though there is 100 people, I like to ask questions to the audience um, and kind of just get it more informal so that it's easier for me and easier for them to listen. So. And that was one of the first types of presentations that you did was Military Line. Yes, it was one of the first ones, yep. And that's, that's intimidating enough as it is. As it is, it was. <laughs> Have you found that over time that folks will come up to you after the presentations and share either um, a good or bad story or say what they've learned from you? Um, absolutely. Uh, you know, I've, I've done workshops from small audience to large audience, and usually the smaller ones we have kind of a back and forth communication, and that's when you really hear the good stuff not the good stories, the bad stories, I guess. <laughs> um, so a couple stories, you know, everybody says, I've had that happen. I've had this phone call. People are telling me that there's, um, you know, military discounts at this rate, you know, and what do you think? And it's, it's interesting to see how targeted they are um, today, which is it's, sad. It's dreadful because we, we find there are people who and we don't know how, how they obtain the names of these folks necessarily, but we have uh, scams that target the elderly, for example, uh, scams that target people of a certain age, but the uh, criminals, scammers, the criminals, uh, we use a sort of shotgun approach, and they'll send out emails or they'll make telephone calls, and if they hear the person on the other end of the line, if they hear they're elderly, they'll tailor their pitch mm -hmm. to them. 
But the folks who go after uh, military families, we're talking about very good salesmen, these criminals. Um, they make a convincing pitch. And I imagine because you're down one spouse or one parent in the house, um, it makes people more amenable or more vulnerable. Yeah, I think that's definitely a big part of it. Um, usually these, these scammers and criminals, like you said, are really um, going after specific areas. So they'll do it right near the bases, um, you know, the military bases, and they'll target that kind of area. Um, and it, it does, it makes them more vulnerable when, when you threaten a military soldier about his security clearance, and, and that's the line you're using. It definitely invokes an emotional response. So. It sounds like the, um, a lot of the uh, imposter scams that we have, they prey on our fears. Um, your electricity will be turned off unless you pay up right away. Mm -hmm. And these folks have enough uh, things on their mind anyway. I know. <laughs> and it's, it's not only, um, and, and by the way, what you see is what you get. Uh, Nicole Smilite, they must love when you present these guys. <laughs> I hope so. I try to be as clear as I can and, you know, just really out there to help people. And that's, that's what we're doing here every day, right? I'm sure they agree. Absolutely. So. Now you also go, um, uh, in terms of outreach, we set, out, we set up tables um, to meet them. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where we do this and what we're handing out? Absolutely. So we go out there to veteran resources fairs. Um, specifically, you know, we do the Norwich Vet Center is one of the places we go. Um, we do Stand Down, which is a great event that the VA hosts every year. Um, we get over a thousand attendees. It's it's awesome. You see, you know, homeless people getting the um, dent dental care they need um, to getting shoes. I mean, everything's there. It's great to be part of that community. Um, those are a couple of the booths we do, um, among others. And then we do the sponsorships, like I mentioned before, will sponsor military appreciation nights. Um, so we do two a year. Um, BBB does it on behalf of BBB Military Line. And there we also get to be a part of it and have a table and talk to other consumers that might not know that we have a military line about military line and why it's important and what we do to help others. And there's always somebody that says, oh, my brother's in the military. Oh, my, you know, my sister is married to. And so there's always just great connections that way. And very commonly, oh, I did not know that. Mm, yes, uh, something. absolutely. <laughs> can, we, can we talk a little bit more about, mili about, the, um, uh, about the military appreciation games? For those folks who don't know, uh, it's in Norwich yep. at Dodd Stadium. Mm -hmm. What happens on Military Appreciation Night? Great. That's one of my favorite events. I mean, as it would be anybody's, it's a great event. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a baseball game. It's in the summer. How could it not be? But what's awesome that we do is we nominate um, nine military heroes. So nine nominated um, men or women will be announced pre-game. Um, in front of the audience and they will get a plaque and be awarded um, that plaque and they'll be on a baseball card deck. It's just a great night to honor them. I mean, last year we had somebody from World War II yeah. be able to be a part of it. Um, so it's a great way to thank them and show others we support them. Oh, they're, they're so proud. I, I nominated uh, someone this past year. He couldn't make it, but he had his wife stand in and when he got his plaque, it brought a tear to his eye. Mm -hmm because he doesn't talk much about it, about his service, but we sat down before and I said, are you comfortable with this? And he said he was. And I said, just for the heck of it, come take a look at our website. Mm. And I showed it to him. And the Military Line website shows a fraction of what's available. Mm -hmm. So some of the things are newsletters. Uh, what are the newsletters about and how do they uh, get them? Is it a downloadable thing? Yep, so we, uh, BBB Nationally does a newsletter every single month and the trusted scout. And so what's in there is just, you know, here's something that's targeting military personnel. Here's a scam. Um, here's some um, research that we found, some data that we found that's for military. And then just a lot of educational stuff, like, you know, whatever is up and coming. So those are available right online every month. It's downloadable. You could sign up for it through email and that's where it is. And you can get books too. I saw, uh, probably got a half dozen, close to a dozen of them. Mm. What are the types of things that they talk about? Defending the home, um, you know, how to avoid a scam, how to avoid identity theft, um, to buying a car, things like that. So 
There's plenty, there's a lot of information out there. <laughs> and the folks who are watching this are probably saying, well, you know, take it for granted. We all know those things and mm -hmm. they don't. One of the other things I wanted to, to get back to the baseball game because the military appreciation night is, is so much fun. Um, we've had rain, we've had weather good and bad, and the people go not just because they love baseball, but they like the event. They love the event. Mm -hmm. And the players all wear those um, specially designed t-shirts for the event. What happens to those t-shirts after the jerseys? So we do, we get, um, we get to have our logo on those jerseys that night being the sponsor. And what we do um, is auction off the jerseys worn that night and the proceeds go to um, our student ethics scholarship fund that's for military line. So that's a child of a military family member. So anybody in high school that's a child of a military family, um, they could apply for this scholarship every year. And we, th through events like this, we get the proceeds possible to do it. And those books are free, by the way, on the website? Yes. I know I'm jumping back and forth here. That's okay. There's so much to say. <laughs> Can we switch gears for a moment? Yeah. All right. Um, for the folks who don't know, Nicole is uh, also graphic design uh, manager and community events. Mm -hmm. We're sitting in front of part of your work, the BBB logo. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks around the state see your handiwork every time they pass by one of the billboards. Mm -hmm. How, what's it like for somebody who doesn't know? Um, the image would be of somebody sitting in front of a of a table and uh, drafting table and drawing and cutting things out. Not like that for a long time. <laughs> no, not at all. Today, um, graphic design is very digital, right? So we're in front of computer screens, um, working through Adobe programs. That's the program of my choice. Um, you know, whether it's Illustrator and design, um, we use computer programs to do that. Um, BBB as a whole is a hard product to get across because it's intangible, right? So coming up with the design isn't always the easiest thing because how do you convey trust? Right. Um, so that's where it gets tricky sometimes, but you know. Well, because I've seen, I know a lot of folks who become graphic artists mm -hmm. and the tools make it easy for anyone to become a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make them a good graphic artist. <laughs> Yeah, but I think a lot of people can do it. It's just how creative you are. It's really where you stand out. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. So um, that also fits into marketing, and you're uh, an integral part of our marketing department. When we are speaking to people, you, uh, we have to use a voice that appeals to folks my age, folks your age, younger and older. Um, is, it a, is it a challenge to try and get that across to everyone, or do you have to have different messages for different age groups? It's a, that's a great question, um, and thank you for the compliment. Um, you know, it's, it's hard as a marketer to hit every market. Um, you have to target the right market in your messaging. So what we do and um, what we try to do is we'll use media, um, whether it's online, we'll target that way, and the message that we send across will be directly targeted to business people when we advertise on business sites. So it's things like that. Um, but you know, when you're talking to consumers and you're saying, here's BBB.org for you know, a trusted source, um, it is hard. It's hard to get every demographic. So you know, there's goods and bads. <laughs> well, one of the things that I learned when I was uh, working television is people will believe what they see before uh, they'll believe what they hear. Hmm. And that um, if you just look at the billboard or the ad, that right away, just the logo says something. Now, people might think it just means popping the logo in, but the actual design has to say something, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Is that, uh, we know that you get tools, as we all do from Better Business Bureau, but you've got a lot of uh, latitude. And it's, um, what are some of the things that you make uh, besides billboards and, <laughs> and uh, things for, for uh, the press department? Right, right. Um, so, you know, I do things from print design to billboards to um, website ads to invitations to events. I mean, it goes, you know, it's a lot of print that we do, but, you know, it's slowly switching to that social media and that digital world because, you know, that's where we are today. So I guess that probably answers to some degree about hitting the different demographics. Mm -hmm. um, certain age groups are going to be more prone or inclined to go to digital media 
as, to po as opposed to others, uh, on social media as opposed to others who might go to news sites right. or dinosaurs who, like me, who read the newspaper sometimes. <laughs> we do I'm advertise right. in the newspaper, so good Yes, we well. do. We do a great <laughs> job. Um, so let's come full circle again with the design and, and with the military line. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we use camo colors sometimes. We have very proud uh, people in our photographs that, that we do at the baseball games mm -hmm. and in military line. What is it that we are saying as an organization that wants consumers and businesses to be informed about best practices? What are we telling the, the, uh, the military folks? We're really just trying to be, hey, we are here for you. Whether it's educational resources or um, you're having an issue with a business, come to us and we will help you find the right person if that's what you need or help facilitate that. Um, and that's kind of the whole point with Military Line is that we just want to be here to help them. You know, less than 1% one, 1 of the population is military. So, you know, they're targeted and they're out there serving our country every day. And we just want to be here to say, we've got your back. Come to us. And uh, to allude to what you said before, there must be a tremendous amount of pride and appreciation on the part of the higher-ups who, who are watching their enlisted men and women learning these things. Mm. So, uh, sort of to, to finish this off, um, when a military family, and we're not talking now about whoever's deployed, the family that's at home, do they attend workshops? Are there things for them, or is it uh, more resource-based? Yeah, so it's both. Um, we always invite, you know, um, spouses and military families and active duty men and women to come out to our workshops and be there with us. Um, but there is tons of resources right online that they can, you know, interact with us and things like that. So there's both. Great. Well, uh, we only have about two minutes to go. So uh, I, I'd like to go back again to the, the presentations that you do. Mm -hmm. We both do presentations of different types. And sometimes I'll, I'll ask, was that a good presentation? And mm -hmm. I'll be told, yes, that was excellent. Mm -hmm. But there were 15 people who fell asleep. And I'll say, well, that's, that's pretty good. Usually half of them do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't suspect these fellows uh, fall asleep, but they're intense. They're intense from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. You see that. So yes and no. Um, you know, my first, my very first presentation, I didn't know what to expect. You know, um, speaking in public is always kind of a shot in the dark, right? So when I got there, I didn't know if I should expect them to be very attentive, to not want to listen, although it was great information. I didn't know what they would, how they would respond. Um, but I've actually found that every workshop I do, um, people are interacting. They always have a story to tell. They always are asking questions um, just because it's so conversational. Excellent. So. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. And I'll see you back at the office. <laughs> Take <you>. care. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of Better Business Bureau's Smart Consumer. We urge you to share what you've learned with your family and your friends and colleagues, and in particular, military families who'd be interested in the many free services of BBB Military Line. And we have a message for you to take to avoid becoming the victim of criminal scams. The best places to start protecting yourself are your telephone, front door, and on the internet. Avoid doing business or giving out any kind of personal or financial information, regardless of who the caller or visitor or email author claims to be. And before we go, on behalf of Better Business Bureau Serving Connecticut, many thanks to Nutmeg TV and to our guest and my colleague, Nicole Fleury, the manager of BBB Military Line. And of course, we'd like to thank you for joining us and allowing us to come into your home. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.